Hello everybody and welcome to FM24. It's not early access, it's not the beta, it's the full game and we are diving in with the 50 plus 1 community save where we have taken over MSV Duisburg. I am going to butcher that name so much through this series. Let's go and have a look. Yes, hello everyone, and I am very excited to announce that we are in the full game of FM24 and Carlos Victoriano has taken charge of MSV. No, MSV, Duisburg. It's not V, that's Dutch. MSV, MSV, Duisburg. We'll get there eventually, I'm sure. Um, Carlos Victoriano, for those that don't know, was a ever-present one-club man-ish for Geisley in our Youth Academy Challenge from last season. He was a Portuguese international goalkeeper that came through the ranks of Geisley. Had one year loan move at Crew, which somehow made them one of his favourite clubs. And from there has gone into management. He is the manager that we have gone for to manage in this save. You are going to be giving him a challenge at some point in this. But we'll get onto a bit of the rules and what we can do and what we can't do a bit later on. Let's dive in and have a look at Doisburg and see how they are looking as a club. And the first thing I always like to do is go and look at the league and see where we stand. First off, are there any big clubs? At Dynamo Dresden are down here. I thought they're really good. Wow, okay, Borussia Dortmund 2, Freiburg 2, Saarbrücken, 1860 Munich. Okay, there are some big teams down here. Well, they're big teams I recognise anyway. Uh, let's go and have a look at the season preview. We are expected to finish 7th by the bookies. 9-1 to one to go up. Okay, not too bad. Saudenhausen, Regensburg and Armenia Bielefeld have just been relegated. Promoted were Lübeck, Münster, Ulm and Utrecht Harching. I think that is. Utrecht Harching. I think is how I pronounce it. Um, I don't think we... Oh, we got May. This guy, May. We'll go and look at the team in a minute. He is in the key player team of the week. So that could be interesting as well. And uh, yeah, this could be very, very interesting. Rules then. Rules of the league. First is promoted to the Bundesliga 2. Second is promoted to the Bundesliga 2. Third goes into the playoffs that play, I think, the third bottom team in the Bundesliga 2. 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th. That's what we need to avoid. They just go straight down. Five subs can be used. Three stoppages from a maximum of nine named substitutes. So you can have a big squad, which is good. Uh, four domestic under-23 players must be in the matchday squad. There must be at least eight under-23 players in the playing 11. Oh, B teams only. Okay. Players under 16 are not allowed to play, and only players registered for the competition are eligible to play in this. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything else too fancy about that. There doesn't seem to be any rules around work permits other than four domestic under-23 players. We may have something about the actual registration of the squad so let's go and check that out because there's something else i like to do early on there you go maximum of three non-eu players in the squad okay and i don't know there's no one flagging up here as non-eu with the old fgn foreign label next to them but we'll have to wait and see when we go and look at the squad but before we do that what do the club and the AI, the 50% that isn't you as the 50 plus one, they want us to do this. They want us to... In fact, why have I come in here? I've got a message about it. Club vision. There we go. They want us to work within the wage budget. Okay, that's a pretty solid start from the club. Maximum one-year contract for players over the age of 34. Okay, board culture. Strive to make progress on and off the pitch. That's, that's normally like when they don't have any real aims they give you that that's not too bad uh record a three league top half finish not too bad that one next season reach the playoffs uh when our contract expires but hopefully we we'll get another one and gain automatic promotion to the bundesliga if we haven't gone up by that point so okay they want us to build in the next three seasons which isn't too bad and only really worried financially about the wage budget uh, and they don't want us to give long-term contracts to older players which i can totally get on board with i don't think that's I don't think that's a problem. Um, we need to go and do tactical direction. But I think let's accept this. And we're going to accept that current vision. And we're going to leave it on the screen while we discuss you and what objectives you as the viewer can put in the comment section and things like that. So I, I want to stay away from very sort of specific things. So when I said it can be transfer policies and transfer culture and stuff like that, it's not go and sign Erling Haaland. 
because then if we don't sign Erling Haaland, what's the punishment? I don't know what to do. Um, so you know, it's going to be like this season. Uh, the fifty, the fans are eagerly excited about young prospects. Go and sign two players under the age of under under twenty one, and they have to play in fifty percent of the available fixtures they have. Something like that. You know, that's a generic policy that means we have to go and find under your 21 players who are good enough for the first team, or if they're not good enough for the first team, are going to have to play 50% of the fixtures they're available for. Something like that. You know, we can go and look at the backroom staff in a minute, but you could have something like um, the board are in, you know, interested in including diversity. Uh, we would like to see one female member of staff on the backroom staff throughout this season. Things like that. I'm giving you ideas. Get your own ideas in the comment section below and in the Discord. If you want to join the Discord, if there's lots of recommendations that have got an equal number of thumbs up votes on them in the comment section, the vote will be done in Discord and the community tab on YouTube. So keep your eyes peeled. There'll be plenty of things to vote on. There'll be lots of chat around this in the Discord. If you want to join, the link is in the description below. But I think that should sum up what we can do. Now, there is the also the objectiveness of adding in punishments if we don't achieve an objective so if you guys say you know you need to win at least 10 home games this season and we don't do it what's the punishment is our wage budget decreased by 10 percent? are we not allowed to spend any transfer budget in the next season do we have to play a certain player for a certain amount of games that season all that sort of stuff can be discussed in the discord and that's where most of the discussions will be happening um, I will keep up with the comments as they come in and I will be collating ideas and putting them to votes and things like that. So I'm hoping it's lots of interaction from you guys, it's lots of involvement from me. It's a bit of a challenge. Some of them can be fun, some of them can be easy, some of them can be hard. Let's see where it goes. But now that's out of the way, let's go and see what we're dealing with as a squad. So looking at the squad, we have three goalkeepers, quite a large number of centre-backs, uh, full backs, a couple of full backs in there, loads of central midfielders, a couple of wingers, and uh, three out and out strikers that we can see in here as well. We also have a Jordanian, a, U, a, a United Statesian, an American, that's what they're normally called, and a Venezuelan as well. So, first off, just going to check Rolf Fletcher. It doesn't sound like a Venezuelan name, so I'm going to assume that you have another nationality, Swiss. You are not. A non-EU. You are not a foreigner in the rules and regulations. Alain Bakir from Jordan is German, so he's also not going to be a foreigner. And Santiago Castaneda, who's only 18, is Colombian, so he may he will count as a non-EU registered player. So we need to be aware of that. So I think that means we've got two spaces for non-EU players. If you want to build that into an objective, please do. Um, but yeah, we'll be going through that. As well three goalkeepers then so what we're gonna do is very quickly look at the ah, let's just do it this way let's go and look at them like this Dennis Smarsh is a goalkeeper that we have aerial reach 15 one-on-ones punching tendency to punch is very high at 14 handling's pretty good jumping reach 18 so he's probably gonna be very tall in fact we're gonna want to see height aren't we so let's click on him properly and get into this one and we'll flick through is this going to go in it's going to go in alphabetical order which is a bit annoying six foot five very very tall jumping reach 18 agility 15 um it looks like he could be a very good keeper actually aerial reach 15 reflexes passing's a bit low kicking's a bit low first touch is a bit low so not sure about sweeper keeper but we'll see started out at hertha berlin so comes with a bit of pedigree as uh, as well let me just go back to the squad vincent muller under 23 handling kicking reflexes aerial reach all at 14 concentration decision positioning's a bit low six foot three good agility decent jumping reach um he started his career at fc cologne so again could be a very good option for us and then maximilian brown is the final goalkeeper we're going to look at easily the weakest of the bunch started at schalke only 20 years old probably one for the future center back sebastian may this was the guy who was in the team of the players or whatever it is the key players of the season he was in here 29 years old really good leadership 16 determination 16 heading 16 tackling 14 marking 14 six foot five jumping reach of 18 he's my sort of player started out at dynamo dresden had another spell at them and has now moved to us enjoys big matches really consistent probably going to be the club captain unless we see someone better than leadership and determination 16 that could be good tobias flexstein right 24 years old it's a bit of a step down 
from the the potential captain we just saw. Started at Schalke, doesn't like big matches, isn't a consistent performer. A bit of pace, six foot three, jumping reach eleven, so he's tall but can't jump very high. Decisions, determination, heading, tackling, marking, not bad, not not bad. Could do a decent job. Don't like the fact he's not consistent. Marvin Senga, 23 years old, started at Nordstedt, had a spell at Kaiserslautern, now playing for us. Six foot four, jumping reach, 17. Decisions, 15. Positioning, 12. Marking, 14. Tackling, 11. Heading, 14. Aggression is good as well. Not looking that bad, to be honest. I, I'm impressed. So far, colour me impressed. I think we're looking pretty good. Marvin Knoll. Uh, prefers to play as a holding midfielder, can play at centre-back. 6 foot 1, stamina 12, agility 11, concentration 12, bravery 15, aggression 13, marking 11, tackling 11, teamwork 14, work rate 12, and uh, where did he start? Hertha, Dynamo Dresden, Hertha, Sandhausen, Regensburg, St Pauli. So, been around a little bit, 32 years old. Could do a decent job maybe for a season. We'll see what he does. Chindu Akene. Right wing, right back, right wing back, attacking midfielder, right striker. Pace, 15. Acceleration, 16. Fitness, 11. Lots of good physical attributes there. 24 years old. Off the ball is decent. Flair, determination. Penalty taking is not too bad. Dribbling, 10. First touch, 9. Finishing, 9. Crossing, 8. Yeah, interesting. Started at Bayer Leverkusen, so comes with a little bit of pedigree. But uh, someone to keep an eye on. Uh, Joshua Bitter. Right back, centre back, holding midfielder. Six foot one, jumping reach 11. Not too bad. First touch, dribbling, marking, tackling, teamwork, positioning, work rate. It's looking pretty good. Schalke is where he started. So again, it comes with a little bit of pedigree there, but doesn't like big matches, but is consistent. So I think those sort of that consistency is something very key, I think, at lower level football. I think you need it. Right, on to our first non-German player. Well, he is German, but no, he's not. He's Swiss, isn't he? 27 caps for Venezuela, 32 years old. Rolf Felscher, decent physicals, um, aggression, determination, positioning, teamwork, work great, all looking good. Tackling, marking, heading, not bad as well. Uh, start. He's had, this is his second spell at the club. Started at Grasshoppers, played for Parma, Padova, Grosseto, Lausanne. Zaragoza, Getafe, Cardiff, LA Galaxy, bloody hell, he has been around. Right, he has been around quite a lot. Uh, on the injured list, and next up, is Nicholas Kule. Kule, uh, eight weeks out with a damaged shoulder. Looks like he could be useful when he's back. Started at Wolfsburg. Um, he's potentially a pretty good player as well. Uh, marking, tackling, first touch, decisions, determination, crossing. Yeah, looks pretty decent, to be honest, Nicholas Kule. Uh, Baron Mugolate will be challenging him at left back. 19 year old German, wanted by Nuremberg, Munchen Gladbach, Hansa Rostock, Firth, and Heidenheim. Right, he's probably got some very good, potentially a Bundesliga standard player. Maybe we cash in and get some money. But first touch, crossing, tackling technique, leadership, work rate, decisions, composure, anticipation, pace, fitness, jumping reach, agility, acceleration, all above 11. Looking pretty decent. He's come through our youth academy. Um, and he's looking like he could be quite a good player. Marvin Bacalors or Bacalors, Bacalors, Marvin Bacalors, uh, central midfielder, holding midfielder, tackling 14, marking 13, aggression 16, bravery 17. Love that. Balance 16, stamina, strength, positioning, teamwork, work great. He looks like he's going to be a very good player in the centre of midfield. 33 years old, so not going to get too much more out of him in his career. But has been at Borussia Dortmund 2, Paderborn, Hanover. So yeah comes with some experience he is wanted by armenia Bayerfeld for a full transfer so do we cash in on the older players we will see tim coffer on loan the only loanee we've got on loan from Heide Heiden heidenheim i think is how you pronounce it but he started at wellingham dusseldorf heidenheim 53 appearances for the dusseldorf second team uh, and now we're giving him a go looks like he could be okay lacking a bit of stamina um but all around pretty good we've got a lot of good defensive tacklers and defensive players so maybe we're going to be building on quite a defensive stronghold who knows but into the next load of central midfielders nicholas Stierlin is also wanted he's wanted by dynamo dresden so the odds on favorites to win the league this year tackling 12 marking 11 teamwork 12 anticipation 11 bravery 12 concentration 11 decisions 12 aggression 10 stamina 12 yeah interesting unterhacht is where we played last season or unterhatching 49 appearances, 3 goals, 62 appearances for Doisberg while he's been at 1 goal. 23 years old, could be pretty good. 
could be pretty good. Casper Yander, um, under 23s, he's 20 years old. Again, another one tackling. Technique, passing, first touch, dribbling. Looks like he's going to be pretty useful. Teamwork, vision, work rate, decisions. He looks, he looks very good for a 20-year-old. Yeah, I'm liking the look of him. Comes from the Schalke youth system. Let's see what we can uh, let's see what we can get from him as well. A very consistent performer, decent player for a Bundesliga two side. So playing, he's going to be playing below his level and versatile. Caspiando looks good. Hamza Anhari, midfield centre, 19 years old. First touch is good. Passing's decent. Technique, vision, work great. Decisions, acceleration, stamina is a bit poor. But again, come through our youth system. Susceptible to injuries. And is maybe could do with a loan move if he's not quite at the right level. But a consistent performer, uh, clever as well, balanced, normal personality. So interesting, interesting. There's some good players here. There's some good players. Jonas Mitchell Brink is transfer listed for or loan listed, I should say. 22 years old, dribbling, first touch, technique, decisions, composure, anticipation. Came from the Hertha Berlin youth system. Uh, not uh, doesn't enjoy big matches, but is consistent. So conflicting things there not a bad young player koja push midfield attack midfield center uh, all rounder looks pretty good 30 years old not going to improve but a good player in this division uh, started at Bayer leverkusen sort of bounced around a bit of germany a little bit looks like he could do quite a job for us in midfield when we need him to um alexander ace vine ace s vine s vine i think we'll call it again looks like a very good all round, I've been bouncing around Germany again. 33 years old, Kaiserslautern, Wolfsburg, Dresden, Nuremberg, Augsburg, back to Hertha Berlin. Oh no, back to Hertha Berlin. Played in the Bundesliga for Hertha Berlin. Sandhausen as well, and we've just picked him up for Duisburg, which is an interesting one. Thomas Piedel, as we get towards the more attacking players. 29 years old, um, seven and a half grand a week. A good player, again, playing below the level that he should be, according to our, our coaches. Crushing 12, dribbling 13, long shots 13, passing 13, technique 13, flair 16, off the ball 13. Again, looks like he'll definitely do a job for us. Um, again, bounce round Germany. Uh, we seem to be picking up either having players that have been with us for a little while through the youth team or journeymen. So uh, it's quite interesting. Ala Bakir, our Jordanian, can play on either wing, uh, under 23, a decent bit of pace. Come through Borussia Dortmund. So could be a good player to have. And he likes big games. Uh, he's nothing about consistency in here yet. So we'll see how that goes. But very raw, but could turn into a good player. Ala back here. Uh, who else we got? Robin Muller is here. 23 years old, dribbling, finishing first touch. All very good. Pace is decent. Agility, stamina, fitness, decisions, aggression. Off the ball, not bad as well. Came from Zellendorf, Bappelsberg, St. Pauli. And now we're giving him a chance. Doesn't like big matches. Really low determination. I don't don't I really don't like that. But yeah, needs some work, but you never know. You never know. Uh, Santiago Castaneda, the American. Yeah. I can see why he's listed for loan. He's not amazing. We've signed him from America, from Tampa Bay. Good passing, good technique, good first touch. Flair's good, work rate's alright, bit aggressive. Decent pace, fitness, jumping reach, acceleration, attacking midfield. Not very versatile, but yeah, six foot two. He's tall, which I like, which is good. Uh, Philip Konig, as we get to the final three, the strikers. Finishing 14, dribbling 14, pace 14, lacking acceleration. Off the ball 13, decisions 14, composure 12. Looks like he could get some goals for sure. Came through Wolfsburg and Erfurt. Uh, 18 appearances for us so far as a club, zero goals. Doesn't like big matches. Um, leading player for regional sides, so not amazing, but consistent. So, I don't know, he may get a chance. Benjamin Girth, which is an amazing name, 31 years old, finishing 14, composure 13, determination 16, off the ball 13, uh, penalty taking 11, 5 foot 11, balance 14, jumping reach 12, strength 13. Sort of would be a target man, I feel. They've got him down there as a poacher or target forward, so I'm sort of thinking target forward there. He's played for Leipzig, um, Sandbrook, Braunschweig, and is now with us five goals in 19. He is enjoying big matches. He's consistent, which is good as well. So probably will be a starting striker. And finally, Pascal Kopke. 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 
Kopka, don't know. Finishing 12, Composure 12, Pace 13, Acceleration 14. Attempts overhead kicks. Haven't really looked into traits yet, but that caught my eye. Uh, it's played for Nuremberg, Hertha Berlin, Nuremberg again, Karlush as well. He looks like he's going to be the leading striker for us. Uh, is consistent and enjoys big matches as well. Sorry, enjoys big matches, but is susceptible to injury. So that is a little bit of a concern. But that is our current first team squad. So is that going to play into your thoughts for objectives and club culture and things like that? You'll have to let me know. Last thing I wanted to check in this introductory episode is the staff in the back room. We currently have myself or Carlos Victoriano as manager and we'll go and check his stats out in a minute as well um head of youth development we have one head of youth development we have five of five coaches which we'll go and look at no set piece coach and we're not allowed one no head of performance no performance analyst even though we're allowed two uh, we have one chief scout we have one scout spot remaining we have no recruitment analysts and we're not allowed a loan manager we have a space for a head physio, a space for a head of sports science, a space for a physio, and a space for a sports scientist as well. The club have one chief doctor and three doctors in there. So our assistant manager is Michael Heimschick, who is a 53-year-old German. Um, he can sort of judge player potential. He can work with youngsters. He's got good mental coaching, good people management, good level of discipline, but doesn't really do too much i guess tactically 10 isn't too bad at this level isn't a goalkeeper coach which is good because carlos victoriano being an outstanding goalkeeper for geisley is a half decent goalkeeping coach so we have michael heimschick and then our coaches uh we have who do we have here that's assistant manager oh do i have two assistant managers philip klug and michael heimschick i have two assistant managers okay the other one is philip klug 30 years old Good, decent judging player potential, working with youngsters, people management. Yeah, okay. I swear he was really good on previous FMs. But anyway, there we go. 30 years old, so he's obviously doing... I don't know. Hang on. Did he have a second job? That's Michael Heimsch, uh, assistant manager. And this one is assistant manager slash performance analyst. Okay, so he's got two jobs. He's got two jobs. We'll let him off. Uh, then we have uh, fitness coach Ruben Solis, an American... Uh, eight for fitness coaching but good determination good adaptability good motivating and works with youngsters uh, and good at negotiating as well who else do we have here we have sydney sam that's a name i recognize yeah german international ex-german international very disciplined not got much going for him in terms of coaching um can judge player potential judge staff ability good motivator basically he's a hard ass he's just gonna get them working hard uh, and then finally we have a goalkeeping coach in sven buquert uh, distribution, handling and shot stopping, all pretty good at this level. Determination, motivating, people management, not looking too bad there at all. And our director of football, which may play an important role in this save, you never know. Ulf Schott, judging player ability 11, potential 12, negotiating 11, determination 16, not bad at all. Of course, you can use the director of football to recommend transfer signings as well, so that might play into an objective or a, a, a transfer culture that we have to do. Um, as well but we do have a few spaces in here and finally Carlos Victoriano so I've got a snapshot of what his profile looked like in the Geisley save a few years before we ended it actually um, because I've uninstalled Football Manager 2023 now so it only has saves in the local files not in the cloud but anyway he is very determined that's what he was in game he had very good determination and his profile or his mentality was actually fairly determined player so he is determined and he's got good adaptability he moved from angola to portugal portugal to geisley geisley to crew crew back to geisley um, on a loan spell and did a good job there now he is a port he was a portuguese international goalkeeper when we got to the end of the geisley save so he had a lot of mental attributes that we could put points in so we've gone for discipline and people management that he would have inherited from myself as part of the youth academy save player knowledge because he was involved in under 21s international tournaments um, so he will have decent player knowledge and that goes with youngster knowledges he played for portugal's under 16s 17s 18s 19s 21s and the full team so he would have seen a lot of good players at international tournaments um, and he's decent at motivating although not the best now coaching ability he has his national c license which is the lowest you can get for this level and um, he cannot coach attacking defending or fitness he can coach all of the goalkeeping things at a half decent level at eight tactically he has two technical he has three because he does have good technical attributes for his goalkeeping stuff is on his profile mentally he's four because his mental attributes were pretty decent across the board and uh, he can work with youngsters because 
he came through a youth academy only save. So that is who we are. That this is the squad. And this is our backroom staff. Now, what's going to happen from here is I am going to play the game from here to January, and there'll be a few videos interspersed around that to say these are the players I've signed, these are the things that we're going to, or the players we've sold, we've signed, um, and then we'll come back and do a few league games. On all of the videos between now and the January transfer window, I don't know if there is a transfer window at this level, but at the January episode, that's going to be like four months of game time where you can get your objectives club culture, staff culture, all that thing in the comment section. All the votes will be happening on Discord and the community tab, as I mentioned before. And then in the January, for the last half of the season, we're going to implement some of your club culture's transfer policies and staff policies and things like that to see how we get on. At the end of Season 1, we'll do a quick review of Season 1, and then that is the opportunity for you to get your objectives and cultures and mission objectives and things like that in for Season 2. And then at Season 2, we go for the full season and we review it in January with objectives from you and the board as well. So let's see how it goes. I hope you're excited for this. If you are, leave a like, subscribe if you are new. I'm excited to get this one going and I'm looking forward to what we can do with Doisberg and take them hopefully up the leagues while fulfilling lots of your directives. Any questions, any comments, get in the Discord. The link is in the description below. My mods in there are going to help answer questions as well. They've been briefed a little bit more in a live stream we had on Twitch last night. And yeah, let's see how it goes. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one very, very soon. Cheers.